India is now the third largest emitter of CO2 in the world and we have to actually ramp up our nuclear power capacity. We need private sector and for private sector to come in, we need actually the two basic acts, Atomic Energy Act. There is still some unknown fear of radiation. This fear of radiation is there in politicians, in bureaucrats, in the media, in civil society. Our demand for nuclear energy can is going to be extremely high as we go forward. And nuclear energy can actually solve the challenge of energy that we will face as we go forward and want to become a developed nation. As again the Prime Minister has said, we need to be self-reliant and atmanirvan on these rare earth minerals as well. The recent Prime Minister visit to Argentina and Bolivia and Chile. So that is an extremely important triangle for lithium which is a critical element for electric vehicle batteries. Nuclear power is basically very, very critical to counter climate change. Really speaking, there is no other source of power which can supply electricity on 24 by 7 basis and is also basically free from CO2 emissions. So India is now the third largest emitter of CO2 in the world and we have to actually ramp up our nuclear power capacity very fast and this is not possible with uh, government monopoly alone. We need private sector. And for private sector to come in, we need actually the two basic acts, Atomic Energy Act and the Liability Act, to be totally recast into a new act, which is permitting the private sector to mine uranium, to process uranium, to set up nuclear power plants, operate nuclear power plant. The only thing that the government has to do is to take care of the regulation, the safety aspects, the safeguards and the radioactive waste. If the government is able to do by do this by submitting the bills to parliament, it was supposed to be done in the monsoon session. Unfortunately, it has not happened. I really hope it happens in the budget session. But before that, the government also needs to have a public awareness drive because nuclear is actually the safest form of power generation in the world. And I think our reactors are operated so safely that they are actually world-class benchmarks. But people do not know about it. There is still some unknown fear of radiation. This fear of radiation is there in politicians, in bureaucrats, in the media, in civil society. This fear has to be overcome by all data. And data is available. Only thing is, it has not been publicized. The Atomic Energy Regulatory Board and the Department of Atomic Energy should publish the data through popular media through social media and then only people will wake up that you have got a source of power which actually has no pollution, which basically is very green and does not generate any ash, does not require huge amount of land and it does not kill birds. So therefore we have got the solution but basically because it is a monopoly, this solution is not being replicated. So amendment of the acts is absolutely important. My question, second question will be related to minerals because India is specifically investing in minerals also and there is a, recently the India launched a national mineral mission as well as and the US is also heavily investing in this sector. So how do you think that India and US collaboration more in this sector? Okay, uh, so what I would actually say is first and foremost what needs to be done is that uranium should also be declared as a critical mineral. And if you look at what is the criteria of the US for declaring any mineral like critical mineral, uranium meets the criteria. A, there is no ready substitute for it. B, we are highly import dependent on that. And C, this is going to continue for a long time in the future. Here also what has happened, because it is a government monopoly, our production of uranium has stagnated. We have enough uranium reserves in the country, but the problem basically is, again, due to public mis misconceptions, due to lack of awareness spreading by the government, this is actually not being utilized. So what the Americans, they have got a lot of technologies, process technologies for extracting a variety of minerals. And the whole issue is that if you don't have Indo-US collaboration, many of those technologies will not come. And more importantly, American companies will not come and invest in India. Another thing is, unless Indian private sector gets into uranium mining, uranium processing, we are going to have reserves that will be in the ground and that will not be mined. And therefore, to increase our self-reliance in uranium, we need to basically include uranium in the list of critical minerals and get the private sector involved. 
and the private sector automatically will get all the technologies that are required to enhance the recovery of critical minerals including uranium, lithium, cobalt and all of this will happen only A if there is partnership and B there is private sector. Uh, I always say India is not about energy transition, it is still about energy generation. Our demand is very high, we have a growing and young population. Our demand for nuclear energy can is going to be extremely high as we go forward and nuclear energy can actually solve the challenge of energy that we will face as we go forward and want to become a developed nation. India currently has only 8 gigawatt of nuclear power. Our target as has been set by the Honorable Prime Minister and the Finance Minister in this year's budget is to reach 100 gigawatt of nuclear power and I think that can only happen with concerted effort from the public sector which is the government, nuclear power corporation as well as the Department of Atomic Energy as well as the private sector working in tandem to actually achieve this 100 gigawatt target of nuclear energy. You see that the US is also uh, heavily investing in this sector. So how do you see how can India and US collaborate more in this sector? I think in minerals it's a two-fold story. India is already very good in base minerals. We mine bauxite, we mine iron ore, which is all great. But more important now in these days with the entire EV adoption is the rare earth minerals. And we saw recently all the uh, hoopla coming in with China, uh, putting in some controls on curbs on rare earth minerals. As again the Prime Minister has said, we need to be self-reliant and atmanirvan on these rare earth minerals as well whether it is mining in India or taking strategic stakes in countries which have these rare earth minerals. I think both things India need to do. Uh, I think uh, the viewers might remember uh, the recent Prime Minister visit to Argentina and Bolivia and Chile. So that is an extremely important triangle for lithium, which is a critical element for electric vehicle batteries which is which are there. So I think this is something which is again going to be a game changer as we go forward because you know as we speak we will have used more and more of batteries as we go forward and hence these rare earth minerals will be really important as we go forward. Uh, my last question would be on the recent tariff issues between India and US. How do you see this will just uh, uh, it will impact on uh, the relationship in terms of business and other uh, sectors? So I think it will maybe impact the business but in a very temporary manner. I think both countries are still under dis in the negotiations, in the discussions to have a win-win deal in the bilateral agreements and I am sure that both the governments will actually uh, you know, reach a very good fruitful agreement which is mutually beneficial for both. So maybe there is some temporary uh, you know, hiccup that will come but I think I am sure both countries will reach to a win-win a, a agreement.